I'm going to make this introduction somewhat short and as descriptive as I can be. This is a new DNA study. If you're not aware, we were involved in Dr. Melba Ketchum's whole genome study, the Sasquatch genome study, for five years. It didn't get a lot of recognition. I do believe that the findings of that study were correct. And I hope this next study backs up and goes alongside of the original findings. This is the DNA contributors and their stories of how they came about gathering this evidence. And so, you know, the agreement is they go ahead, they do the DNA assessment of it, they give us the results, and then they send it all back here. So you maintain, you know, control of it. It, it doesn't belong to anybody but you. Um, and that's, that's why I wanted him to come out here to physically take the samples, because once we, we were talking about the chain of custody, yeah, yes, that's got to be how important that is. Control. And uh, my, right now, what I'm doing is I'm I'm touching this with my hands, of course. Don't now it'll be, it. but it doesn't have what we need, which is the biggest problem with DNA testing with hairs. Is the DNA hair basically? I think for Bigfoot is an insulation. It's like duck feathers. Yeah. You know, so that when you look at the hair under a microscope, it's hollow, so it'll it'll hold air in and also clearly insulate. But the complaint people have is, well, if there's no skin or blood attached, then you're, it's very difficult to do any kind of good DNA tracking on it. So it's to, you can say, well, that's a different kind of hair, but is it... Um, God, there's a lot of this stuff. I'm, I'm actually thinking with that ball of hair he's got, there's probably some... Um, Scalp? Possibly. That's what it looks like in the photo. His something's attached to it. So is that your impression, George? What? That this, what you have has got some scalp on it and skin, maybe? maybe Blood. It's, it's all matted up and... Yeah. Okay, that sounds excellent. I was looking at it through the bag. I seen, um, like, uh, grass and stickers and stuff inside it. That's good. So he probably had a, a maybe even a so, chunky hairball so, that got so caught. Maybe he, it was a hairball that got caught, not its piece of skull. Possibly, which is fine. A hairball is going to take some skin with it. I'm cool with that. Yeah. Well, Cynthia, can you get a, a white envelope and we'll just put it in it for now yep. so we don't... Um, yeah. So why don't we grab one of those? Uh, Hereford Red. I, I need and one of his jackets. Jackets and Hereford yeah. Red. No, with pockets. Oh. Wow. Oh, you need to get one. I don't have any pockets. Yeah. There was left. You saw three um, individuals walking in the Mesa area. Yes. Now, there's something growing up on that Mesa behind your house. What is that? As uh, the nappy cornfields, apple orchards. Apple orchards, cornfields, pumpkins. So there's a variety of crops just up there. And just below your house here, what do we find? No, the San Juan River. The San Juan River. So there's a water source on one side, and there's an actual uh, abundant food source of crops just above your house. How far do you think that is from here? It doesn't look that far. Maybe a quarter of a mile? Yeah, about a quarter of a mile. To the base of the mesa, and then you go up on the mesa and down that way, and you find the nappy fields. Yes. Okay. Um, so, besides you seeing that, were these individuals walking away from you or towards they you when you saw them? They were walking away up, up the mesa. Up the mesa. Um, and you saw three of them, you said? Yes, three. Um, can you f even guess, um, were they all the same size? Were they different sizes? No, there was one, it was a darker color, mm -hmm. like it was black. From the distance, we see it looked black. Mm -hmm. And then there was two smaller ones, that, that color of that hair. Of, of the reddish color hair. Yeah. Okay. So there were three individuals. One appeared to be an adult and two juveniles or younger ones or smaller ones uh, moving together up the hill. When they walked, can you describe how they walked? What did it look like? Mm. They were going up the hill when you saw them walking? Yeah. It, if anybody walked up that hill, it would take them a while, but those things just caught up went up there real fast. They just went up as if it was no problem. Yes. So they would plant their foot, then they would step, and they would be making progress uphill at an angle. Yes. Um, and if you and I tried to do it, we would be having to bend over, stumbling, falling, and not really being able to get up there. Yes. The angle on that hill looks pretty steep to me. It looks at least 45 degrees 
um, at the most, it may be uh, a very uh, steep climb to get up there. So, um, now you have you ever found anything besides the hairs around here? Uh, footprints. You found footprints. Were you able to document those? I, I took pictures of footprints. Okay. And um, when did these footprints occur? Was that about the same time you saw the hares, or yes. before, or after? Well, that that day we seen those three up there. We came down and we took a pumpkin and some watermelons up there. Mm -hmm. well, let's leave it up there, see if they come down. Uh huh. And we came back. We we ate dinner next door. Um, we had a little cookout. Mm -hmm. And so we decided to go back up there again. You see what had happened? Yes, and one of the watermelons was gone, uh -huh. and we found it farther up from where, where we left them, mm -hmm. and it was broken in half and had bite marks. It's got big bite marks. So it had bite marks in yeah. it. Oh, my yes. goodness. So something had eaten, that broken the watermelon open and bit into it and eaten it. Yes. Now, the footprints that you saw, um, just we haven't looked at the photographs, but what did they look like to you? They look kind of long and narrow. Would you say, let's say about 17, 18 inches long? Yeah, about 16 inches. 16 I, inches? What I measured it was 16. 16 inches, okay. So they were clearly something, if you saw it and you didn't know it was a big foot, you say, that's a man with a really big foot? <laughs> no, I was thinking, when we first saw them going up the hill, I was thinking, wow, there's a big foot right there. I, I could tell. I, I knew it was what it was. Uh huh. So it clearly had, it clearly was something with five toes, yes. it's a naked foot, um, and it was found near where the the fruit had disappeared. Yes. Okay, and uh, then you later found the fruit with bite marks a little bit farther away, been yes. broken over and apparently eaten. Yes. Okay, so they, w presumably these animals had eaten this stuff. Now, um, how long have you lived here in this area, in this house, in this general area? I've lived area? here all my life. And so how old are you right now? I am. 34. 34. So you've been here since the beginning. And your mother, did she live here in this house too? Yes. So this is a family tradition. Did your parents, when you're growing up, ever say anything to you about these things or tell you stories that they might have seen something? Mm, my dad, but he, he was, um, we have a sheep camp. His mom has a sheep camp up there in a, by in Sanasi. Mm -hmm. in Sanasi. The mountain, the mountain. How do you spell that? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's what they call it. Okay, Lots well, yeah. of activity, Sanosti <laughs> area. Sanosti area. So Lots we, of yeah, activity. Okay. And that was a long time ago, like more than 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. My little brother and my little sister were small little kids then. And they were um, picking herbs and stuff mm -hmm. out, out in the mountains. And they heard it sounded like, they said, my dad said it sounded like a little baby was crying. Uh -huh. And so he got kind of got worried and started walking around. And he said he walked up upon it. It was walking down a trail. And he said he looked at it face to face, whatever it was. And he said he got scared. He turned around and started stumbling through the trees, everything, trying to get away. <laughs> and it, it threw a big rock down to, towards where they were at. Uh -huh. Like a boulder, kind of. Like he said, it looked like a banana, kind of. And it came flying out of the hills. Uh -huh. So it was definitely there. So there, as far as you know, there's been transgenerational activity here. Your father experienced things in, an, in the general area. Have you ever heard any sounds at night or heard any other things uh, that you would ac couldn't account for? Just like we heard a growl on this side. Mm -hmm. Like it sounded like it's down the hill. We heard a growl and um, like rocks would be thrown. It, one, one rock hit this. We had a uh, um, the solar lights on top shining that way. Okay, when the growl occurred, where were you exactly? And where I was, I was at my trailer. My mom was the one that heard it. She was in her house. She heard heard a trailer, and she heard some rocks. The sound of rocks hitting yeah. the woodshed. Yeah, it hit real hard. And then the dog started barking right here. Okay, and then the dog started barking. So it was it was throwing things at your woodshed. And did you investigate and find any rocks? Or she she told us she came. Yeah, we did find one. And, but uh, we were we were doing the wood yesterday, and we raked up around, and we moved that rock that was back there. But it's, it's a big, pretty good How round big? size. Was it bigger than a baseball? About the size of a baseball, almost. Maybe a little bit bigger, or around that size. Yeah. Okay. So something threw a rock at the woodshed, and it was growling. Um, what did she say the growl sounded like? Did it sound like a dog, or uh, kind of real loud, like deep growl, deep, deep rumbling growl, throaty growl, yeah, like that. Yeah. Something okay. like that. And so. 
what we're going to do with this is we're going to right up by the palace. We're going to seal it. This will leave on Monday uh, to Jeff Maldrum after I have a, a, a fourth phone call with him about this, about the the protocol for returning the material that's mm -hmm. not used, um, all of it back to the people who. Basically, this group that we're, we seem to be coalescing, and so you guys will get it back, and we'll keep it, you know, um, in this region. So that's the idea. We're going to try to extract DNA. Um, of course, the more hair samples we have, the better chance we have of doing it, because hair shafts are notoriously hard to extract DNA from. If it has a root, a, a bolt, where the, there's, you know, an attachment spot, and it sounds like we might have some, given the way it happened, instead of just the hair falling off, um, you're much more likely to get a positive result um, okay. and enough that you can then say what it is or what it isn't. So and it, it's looking like here in just a few minutes we might have some live specimens. Yeah, sorry. yeah that would be kind of cool. It's, it's going like nuts. nuts. Yes. We have We've done our, our peanut activity. butter transect out of a quarter of a half a mile or so, a quarter of a mile, I would say not half a mile. And we've got some peanut butter on the trunk of a tree out there. Uh, we heard rustling of leaves uh, while we were coming back and we found a place I don't know how we would describe it as a copse where there was, there was stuff clearly cleared out yes. like an ambush and line like an ambush deer, point, and it went way back and way back and way back you could see where multiple individuals could literally, literally bed down there oh, yes. and, and it reminded me of what um, Rob was talking about in terms of clearing the, the, the soil and the ground up because there was very little stuff in there and it was covered over, so it would be a nice, warm place to hang, but also to ambush anything coming down the road. Uh, Les, would you uh, state your name, and let's get today's date and everything, uh, and what you've submitted here. Les Godwin. Today's date is uh, November 8th, 2014, and submitted samples of hair that was extracted from a pine tree west of Sheep Springs, New Mexico, in the Chusca Mountains. And we've got some black hair and reddish hair, or was it gray? Gray, it's gray. Okay, black we've got gray. black and black gray. And gray. Uh -huh. Okay, that's a that's an older individual. An older individual. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. In color, the other mm -hmm. was very very dark, and the and the male or whatever it was was just sitting there watching them kind of do well, this. From what we can right. gather so far, the the young are a lighter phase, a lighter and then phase. they go into whatever color they're going to go into. And whatever they're going to be. But this chestnut orangey. And the under the under surfaces would be more of an orange, and the over surfaces would be more of a chestnut. Chestnut, okay. And it, what it does, it, man, you laid into these salt cedars or anything like that in here, and they're gone. The uh -huh. orange is something people don't really care, you know, think about much in camouflage, but we add it to our camouflage after tracking these guys. And the chestnut is actually, when depending on the spectrum your eyeballs see, the chestnut's the best color to have the lowest response to the eye. We were talking about the orangutan red today, too. Yeah, what a that's wonderful more what? Than red panda red, yeah. yeah. some action in here and I got sound right in front of me. Right in front of me. There we go. I just got grunted at. Just got grunted at. I'm not going to run.
lose focus. That's my breath. It's about 20 degrees over here. That was a hell of a grunt. So I've got something on my right and a hell of a grunt on my left. A serious grunt. I sure hope this camera caught that. That was not a joke. bunch of clicking sounds off to my left, but that grunt came from right here. Now I've got wood snaps, I can hear it moving. I sure hope you can hear that on the camera. And here's the prints right here. Come on. These are the prints from earlier today. Right there. So we've got a game cam set up in there. Somewhere. But I just heard a bunch of clicking right in here. I don't know what in the world that was. Oh man, no wonder they're broadcasting my sounds. Holy shit. Oh boy, come on, come on. Stay in focus, baby. There we go again, I got two bangs to my left. Which means I'm going back to my right. In case I'm being distracted. Okay, we've got a game camp right here. I mean, that was a serious grunt. It was no joke. I can't really see. I'm not looking through the viewfinder because it blinds me worse. Looking for high shine. That didn't sound more than 30 or 40 feet from me. There it is. It's over there. We got it. We got sound on this one. Not a lot of movement in here. right in front of us. Moving really slowly. Here it comes. Hear the clicking. 
what that is. I'm going to go back and report. I'm not going to go into that mess. It's not going to benefit anybody, so... I'm just going to head back over to camp now and uh, report what we're witnessing. I've still got sound directly to my left. That's where the big grunt came from. Oh boy, a lot more. I want to go back in. I can hear the loop, all kinds of loop. But I know too that that's bait. So they do the same thing for all kinds of animals. So I got to report because I'm not going to play victim to what they want me to do. Fuck you. I just got grunted at from like yeah, 40 feet that. away. I just heard that right now. I'm <laughs> 40 feet from me right there. There's two individuals. There's one over there that's smaller. There's one over there that's a big son mm -hmm. And he's not stopping. He's over there clicking and he's bending, tweaking right through there where it gets yeah, thick and dark. I was trying to get eye shine. I walked to the edge and I felt like I was being baited. Yeah. Do you want him to want us to come on the outside and maybe push him back toward you? I'm hearing we could do that. I'm hearing stuff. Sure, I think that's... I don't know if we want to try to corner him or, or <laughs> just let him play with us. He's not... He, he didn't go anywhere, but the grunt sounded a little intimidating. Okay. You, well, did probably did you hear it? It was It was close yeah. enough... Yeah, yeah. It was close enough that... Um, I mean, I just mentioned that, that one almost yeah. bugged me. Yeah. Is that when you were <laughs> coming out of the bushes right there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like that. Like, <laughs> Dude. <laughs> that one almost bugged me. So would you say that when you playing those sounds out? Well, you know, when I was over there and you hear it in the clip, I said, well, damn, no wonder <laughs> they're playing the vocals and they're just here. Yeah. But you know what's weird is the one on the, the, one on the right. I just saw three on this one. Okay, the one on the right seems smaller. And when I started getting over there, the one on the left grunted. Like, yeah. like, did you, did you guys hear it? I heard it, because I mentioned it to him. JC, didn't I mention it to you? JC. We just had a hell of a bang. Didn't I mention it to you? Just a second ago, what I heard. Yeah. I was like, dude, I heard that.
straight in front of me. You've got to be able to hear this. It's a massive biped in here. He's huge. And he can't go anywhere. I just crawled through the brush and flushed him out. sneak around my side right now. God, I hope this is getting this. I gotta see this thing.
bus come out, you go by me, I'll take the hit. Don't even sweat it. Did you throw that? This just got thrown at me, and it came across his stomach, and it f the leg right here. So, okay, they're throwing rocks that could kill us right now. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna throw this rock out on the ground. We're gonna retreat. I don't need to get in there. That's too fucking guys. That is too fucking hear you. We're good. No more off. How about this? Don't throw no more rocks, dude. That could have hurt me. I'm not here to hurt you. I'll throw it back. You get me? This rock will hurt you too. I understand that. So I ain't scared of you, Holmes. We're just showing you respect. Don't around. But smooth. But smooth. Don't turn around. Do not turn around. That's no bull got tagged with a hell of a rock. And that was by the little kid. It was by a smaller one that's with that. That's a female. And it's like a little kid with the female. Looks like we might have had, I don't know, an adolescent with a big bastard. Big one tapping, adolescent shut his mouth. Little one just chucked the guys. He came out into the road, into view, coming at us and just hit us with the Rock never even hit the ground, dude. I caught it. Okay. You all right? Did yeah. it just go? It just went right across here. There's a line right there. There's a line on this dude, man. And there's the rock that made the line. And I'm telling you, that f right yeah. there. I'd like to hit me in the nuts. That fucking rock hurt, dude. I got a little, it hurts. My leg hurts. <laughs> it my ass. Oh, that was good That's fucking cool. Yeah, now I want to see everybody come out here with us one of these days. It just hit us with the rock, dude. I got it. Yeah. Dude, it came out into the road. It's too far. It came out in the road. There's four of them. And that... Hit him across the stomach, striped his sweatshirt, and hit me right there. My leg hurts okay, like a so bit. Okay, so they came this way. We're trying to figure out how the got the rock in. It ain't the same one. There's a, right here? Yeah, he's got a line across his stomach. He hugged it. If anything, you, you can hear him on the camera. He's coming out in the road. Okay, he's so coming toward us. He came out in the road. Yeah. This is from Junior. Yeah. Mama yes. and Junior on that side of the road. Okay. Big ass and an adolescent are over here. Adolescent's staying real quiet. Big ass is tapping to us. Mama and Junior are just walking, dude. And Junior moved back out to the road, and he said, well, he's coming our way. And he did. He came out to the road. You could see the dark. That he's coming know. toward us. And he <laughs> rock at us and fucking come across and hit me. <laughs> this rock has not even hit the ground. You got a bruise on your leg, Robert? I don't know. I don't bruise easy, but this rock has not hit the ground. I caught it when it hit me. I So we've been doing some reconnaissance in here for uh, some of the hominids that we've had showing up. And we, I know at least we had one small juvenile show up the first night whose print we got the next day, the next morning. And so uh, when we got back in last night from the Chuska Mountains and we got over here and started to do our little campsite and things, we started having action over here and a little bit of sound. Uh, Jesus and I came over to check it out. And actually I, I kind of got a little brave and and went down this trail and all the way down to the big logs down below because my curiosity was getting me. And Jesus hung down here in case something came back up and around. We could kind of cut it off. I'm bridge over here, so come this way. This is what you're talking about. Tail to the right. Tail to the right. Went down this way to Robert. 
when down there, we were talking about through those logs, I stayed on the corner here, and I heard some uh, movement right here. So uh, I know that they like to do certain things and like to mimic, so I got to making this noise going tap, tap, tap three times, and it would do it back to me. Bro, it sounded like it's doing it with his mouth. I'd do it again, tap, tap, tap. And you do it again, and it would adjust itself. I could hear it rustle a little bit. And that's when I started calling him, because after the second time it responded, I was like, I know what's doing that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so I called him back over here, he came over here, and he's like, he's like, let's go check out that over there. I was like, oh. He's like, why? I was like, it's right there. Yeah, he kept telling me, no, no, it's right there. <laughs> it's, it's right, right there. there, man. And that's when he was, he was like, all right, cool. And you see him take off and jump off the, yeah, so the bridge. I figured if he's in there, he's got to go out to the clearing on the road. We've been walking the road. And two, the rock on the road is scary because you're on the road and they're in the bushes. So, so I just said, heck with it. and said, right there? He said, yeah, right there. So I jumped down, cruise in. And I can't get through here standing up. I had a fear. So it was easier just to lay down. So I lay down and belly crawled up into them. And, and I was standing right here while he was just going to watch. We didn't know if they were in here or not, but it as it ends up, the whole, at least four individuals were just parked in this mess. Yeah. Just beyond what this thicket is here, just inside of that, four of them were just parked in here and weren't going anywhere. We didn't know, of course. I know the clicking. I believe I believe Jesus, you know, and all that stuff, but I still got to see. And what happened was, I, as I ended up cruising through this stuff, I ended up flushing one. And it was like, it's, it's one of the youngers, we had different sizes. We had like an adolescent, medium size with a big, big, big one, probably the big male. And then we had like maybe a slower, more cumbersome female that's large with a junior that's, that's maybe four foot tall. And when I busted through this stuff, I didn't realize because I'm going through this thick, Jesus is looking and, well, you tell him. I mean, I didn't even see it get up and go. No, no. we just, we heard, we heard it go. It started to make noise later, when it was farther away. And I said, okay, I'm going to go around. He said, I'm going to meet you on the, right there and we'll meet up. And I came around, I came around this morning. And uh, he's crawling through there. He's crawling through there and, uh, yeah, it's traveling to the left. The, the, the big one and the, and the mother. And I'm guessing that the baby. And, uh... I come to about right here, and I hear him say, do you see me? And I, at that point, I've made it through all this, and I've come around this corner, and I said, wow, I can see where they've been laying and watching us. And as he moved across, I moved to this position, and I asked him, can you see me? I said, can you see me? And his eyes were glanced. Not too far from where the camera position is. That's where you're at, right there where you're standing. But damn near where you're I standing. I saw the silhouette of, a, of, a, of a, a human. I thought I was a human. You know, head, arms, shoulders, all that stuff. And uh, I said, yeah, you're right there. And he goes, no, do you see me? And I, and I finally located him with sound. I looked right and I see him squatting there. I'm like, yes, I do. And I as go, I walk and out. that too, I go, then that's, I go, it's right there, dude. It's right. right there. And as I'm walking out, it's walking away yes, from I'm that position that way, yeah. through that through that gap stuff, that direction. Yeah. So right. then, go so then we have a whole position, which this will be good too, because I've got a game camera in place that you should have walked in front of or, or over last night. You can see where he went right through the grass. And he comes around and goes this way, and he hops over. And he was then, what he was later, we'll, we come to find out, he's the adolescent that was with the big male uh, about an hour after this. So we had continued, and I, I don't know where I stopped here, right about here. Where? I'll tell you, I know exactly where. Right this so, and, and now we're moving forward, no noise. We're not making any sound whatsoever as we progress in because I don't want them to key on us or react too hard to our presence. So as we move forward, I think you're, no, I was, you're here, Jesus, because I'm, I'm right by that log. And you were about 30 I'm feet from me. Right I was right, I'll, I'll show you. Because you have been right on the back no, side no, of this. I started off here. I 
I started right. right here and then I started doing this. Remember I told you? I started doing that and every time I would do that, it would come closer and then I ended up right here and you were already crawling in and it stepped up and there's a footprint right there. You can see the footprint. Right. Right here on the grass. Um, it stepped up and you were over there always on the left side of that log. Oh, I, okay, I see where I was. Right here, if you look, right here you can see print there's the heel yeah. toe 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 there's a toe print right there yep. it was standing there's another one over here Right when he came up that close to me, that's when he got up and came behind me. Because that big one came up. Well, to before you. that, I told you to hold, and then we yeah. had about a, almost probably seven minutes, ten minutes. Yeah, that was me scooting over, scooting over, scooting so over. So I told over. you to hold about the position that he was at now. Yeah. yeah. And then so, so I gave him a hold command and belly crawled over to this position, and the big, 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 big one was right there. So I started to move in, and I was still not making noise. I could do this silently. And as soon as I hit the edge, I stopped. And his shoulders and all of him was right through this gap. And he can't stand all the way up. And what I saw, I, I just backed up and got down and held the camera. And he was raising up right there. And from my point of view, he was a good three or four feet higher than what I could see as a dark mass and it lumbered and lumbered and each step had to weigh 2,000 pounds every bit of it sounded way heavy for a cow even but it was big soft bipedal steps continuous and he did not get in a hurry he did not run um, at that point I didn't even know this other one was over here yet and and he moves across moves across moves across and I just kept recording I started to go this way. I got up and started to move around and try to get a view. And immediately, right on the other side, before the white pole, there's a little tree that's slanted. Right there, and up down, I hear an individual gum just walk. It's lighter, it's not the big one, just walk out and walk around like it's flanking me. And I just immediately turned back, put my back to it, and then we backed out, completely backed out. This is J.C. Johnson with a flashlight showing the angle where he was at during the night of the sighting. When J.C. was signing the light, I signed the flashlight, the brighter one. I said it had to be hunkered down or laying, but its head was real big, and I seen the eyeball. Its head had to be at least this big, and the eyeballs were like that far apart. And they were big, like bluish green, and it shined, and it, it was moving back and forth, you can see it. It had to be laying down or feeling real low. But I seen a massive head from that distance where that tree's at. We were standing on that little trail there I heard the twigs break in, and so we both looked this way. And it started getting louder, and so JC told me it's time to hit the lights. He shined his flashlight over in this direction. The flashlight I had was bright, and it lit up this whole area. And I just see that big black head and the two eyeballs looking at us. About right here, it had to be like right here, moving back and forth like that.
saw right here we saw the uh, thermal or the night vision. Jack's night vision right here behind uh there was two of them right here. One of the big ones back here and a smaller one was hiding behind the frisbee chain thing. It was crouched down behind the frisbee chain thing. We were looking and watching it. And then we looked away when we came back, it wasn't there behind it, the black mass wasn't behind it anymore. More polished on top than on the side. That ain't cow. That's a but check this. This polishing goes all the way up to here. This polishing goes all the way up to here. It takes hair to get that polish and get that oil on there. And then I went, well, where would he put his hands? He put his hands, and I got tufts. Big tufts. Where he put That don't look like cow hair. There's also, all the way back under that part, there's one on the bottom over there. The whole, and I mean, and I, and I get cows, yeah, polish it. I don't see how they polish so high up. And then Sometimes they'll rub, too. Oh, Oh, yeah. That's true. Yeah. Here's the thing. With conjecture, when we got 70 head of cattle running around here, they're going to get us. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. But take some hairs. Well, my deal is I'm looking at what's a cow hair and what's not a cow hair. I don't see him going under there. I can see him doing a rub. Me too. I can see a rub, but I don't see him going under there. I was trying to do is figure out high here where they can't. Like this. Yeah. Yeah. Free hair. Free. And it's all the way up in here. Something big. Just, just. I never saw anything like it. Just like Really? Potential, brother. Potential. Is it here? Lots. Huh? Lots of here. I don't know if it's cow or not. I don't think it is. Speed. So, after uh, my little deal with Jesus over here, and we had that action, I, we, we waited about 30, 40 minutes, because we're really not trying to run these things around or push them or upset them or anything, especially since we know they got a little kid. We've heard the infant. First day we came in, we found some infant scat along with a toddler scat and then uh we actually that first night we heard a baby crying and whining and giggling back off in here somewhere in the woods uh so like i say about 30 minutes goes by we really don't want to upset them so we gave as much time as we could and uh june bug here and i wanted to come in and see him he wanted to experience this stuff too there were some witnesses from another location and so we moved in once we got past the camp and out of the leaf matter we moved dead silent we didn't make any noise. We made low and slow approach. And you can probably see up the road here a little bit. And uh, we just, we moved in a little bit farther than what uh, what Jesus and I did before stopping even the first time. And I think we can walk down there and, and I'll show you where we had the encounter. What's up? You find something? Somebody hold your hand. We got toes. Toes? Come on. All right, we'll We've be got here in feet. a minute. Don't let them blow away. <laughs> I'm going to check this. Well, we figure we probably actually received the rock last night. It's pretty logical because we got scat down water from a small individual, and then we also had scat uh, from an infant. It wasn't being fed any solid food, just algae and probably nursing. Right, and there, so that picking that up, our first night camping here, we all heard the sound of an infant out here in the trees. And it was a whine and a little infant giggle. And it makes an awful lot of sense. We had what sounded like a cumbersome large one moving real slow, real methodic, not getting in a hurry. You had a real big one over here who was constantly tapping to distract us. We'll tell you the story. And uh, when we received the rock, it was from a little one that was with that other one that was real calmly walking. And I got a real big feeling that the reason that every time we paid attention to that one, one would distract us. And then when we did go ahead and go, oh, look, 
They chucked a rock at us. I think that was probably walking with that in. Wow. I would almost bet. Cool. Because that type of activity, that type of interaction like that, we we're trying to figure out why in the world, <laughs> you know, for one, wasn't that one going anywhere and kept tapping? Why didn't they throw a rock at us? Yeah. Very cool. Where this goes in the over there. Yeah. All he said was soft legs running this way. He yelled at it and ran after it. And it ran into the street. Okay, well, you need to come in. It was full of hair. This angle's yeah. good. Okay. Matter of okay. fact, it's so basically, your brother saw it, it run into this tree, and that's when you decided to... He heard it running this way. Uh-huh. Just crash, 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 crash. And he yelled at it. He took off running after it, not knowing what it was, to see what it was. Excuse me. But by the time he got over here, he had already gone. But he saw great big, huge legs below yeah. the pine boughs. So. Um, weren't they getting some 12-foot strides up here with the tracker they brought up? Yeah, he's up here. So he... Fuck it, we don't need to go there. Yeah. Your word's fine, brother. So who was doing the 12 foot strides? Right. Who, who tracked them? I was uh, Phil and Les. Okay, good. Example, so we got a videography of the tree I was talking about? It's kind of been off a little bit. Yeah, and that's the thing. I've got an eyewitness on this tree. That's where we're going to get the hairs. That's the whole thing. I mean, this is a tie in the chain of custody type deal. Okay, we're here at the site of a Sasquatch having run into the tree in the whole quarter. And we're about to take samples. And you actually see the top part laying right there on the... Oh, wow. So he probably did knock it down and kind of mess it up when he How smacked it. How long ago was it? Let's, Three weeks let's ago. check that out. There's some bleaching Jesus, on top, so... Down. So it may have been... Right well, yeah. it wasn't broke, but but he 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 came in when his when he he said his brother saw him and he was gone. Yeah. Well, he was surprised because he didn't hear him or see him running down the mountain because he was here. He he was here right behind this tree. Yeah. He ducked in. That's what they do. So. Yeah. And they just stay behind. And the they tree stay and, and he'll and he'll work around he'll look you. Out now, and they... interesting is this branch. If you notice, is up, turned around. It's up and turned around, meaning his leg. His body came in and hit this, and his leg came all the way around here and turned around, and he stood here. So his this this branch could, followed the angle of attack. This could very well be leg hair. Leg and lower, in, yeah, lower I would, part of inseam, lower part probably of the body, in, in the lower. I would say in this in part of the body. Yeah, and on him probably. It, yeah, it, it might have been the calf. The calf, yeah. high calf behind the knee. We're in the Chuska Mountains, 2014. Um, it's approximately. <laughs> Uh, 2.30 in the afternoon, uh, what is the the name of this area we're writing? Does it have a, any other kind of designation besides Chuska Mountains? Not exactly that I know of. I'm pretty sure there is, but I don't know. Okay. Um, we are near the Narbonne Pass. We're near Narbonne Pass, uh, which is the, the highest point crosses over into the other side of the mountain range. Yes, sir. This direction. Okay. This is south. And, east. and we would describe this as a, a, a pine forest with mixed pine, aspen, yellow pine, ponderosa pine. Yes, sir. Um, all, all mixed together. It's fairly un, un uh, managed. There are a lot of uh, large old growth trees here. Uh, and so there's presumably a lot of different kinds of food that could be t could be taken by a primate here. Uh, we are. T what is your full name? My name is Nicolaius Harley Begay. Nicolaius Harley Begay. We're talking to Nicolaius about a sighting and an and an encounter with with uh, one of the hairy people, as we call them up here in First Nation, who ran into a tree on his way down a hill. Yes, sir. Um, can you describe to me what your brother told you about the sighting to the best of your ability? Will do. It was about three weeks ago this happened. I believe it was... What time uh, in the day? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Don't nighttime, know daytime? It. Daytime or nighttime? Daytime. Okay. Daytime. They barely got up here, so most likely in the morning hours. Mm -hmm. It was uh, October 22nd, I believe. He got up here. Everybody was on the other side of this hill. They are collecting wood. And he straight off, he started scouting for another tree to take down. He was walking in this direction over here. He walked up over there. And he could hear branches breaking. breaking behind him. But he thought it was just the rest of them. So he just, you know, blew it off. And he could, whatever it was, he, could, he thought like it was running. He thought maybe it was his brother or girlfriend catching up behind him. So he just kept walking. 
until whatever it was was running was loud, heavy footsteps. Thud, 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 thud. The way he described it, it was like a horse running, but very heavy. So he just, he finally looked to catch his attention. And what he saw, he just saw legs coming down this hillside right here. Mm -hmm. Bam, 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 and just breaking trees, breaking branches, crashing. Now, let me ask you a question before we finish, we continue. Is that's the same direction that the rest of the crew was in? Yeah, they're on the other side of this hill. So you could imagine maybe the animal was running away from them. He it spotted them and it was coming this way away from them. That's what we think it might might have happened. Probably okay. woke it up. Okay. Um, and then what happened? He yelled at it. He yelled at it, and he wanted to know what it was. He started running after it. So he was over here? He was over here. And he started running in this direction. He where do you think running. he ran? Right along this path here, yeah. the, where we had the roadbed? Yes, sir. And it was coming down the hill this direction. It was coming this down direction. this way. And by the time he got in this area, it was already. But apparently it hit this tree. It apparently it did, yeah, because there's a lot of fur or hair on this tree right here. Did you say he, he saw its legs? Did he so. see it from the waist up? He just seen the legs. He saw just huge legs. And he wasn't able to see anything else. No, nothing else. Okay, and so um, did he have any kind of clue of how, how far off the ground the legs were? How tall? No, but he did say he seen the strides. The strides were at least eight to twelve feet strides. He's guessing. He said it, it was running. It was, it was big. It was fast. It was big. It was fast. It was heavy mm -hmm. because of the sound it was making. It yeah. was breaking branches, going downhill. Exactly. It was running away from something, um, and it, as it came down the hill, it hit this tree. Apparently, um, in that process, maybe it looked back at him and broke one of the branches down at an angle. Um, and on this tree, we've actually been able to find forensic evidence. So. The animal clearly was dark. We found dark hairs, also with an auburn mix and well as blonde to gray, off, and we've been able to extract those from this tree. Uh, have you or your family seen or heard about anything like this in this area? Could you describe what, you, what you've heard, uh, stories told by other people, things that maybe people who are older than you might have told you when you were younger? My people my elders they don't talk about it it's something they don't not want to talk about mm -hmm. um, but I heard I do heard that um, we call them the, the cluggies the cluggies cluggies which means the hairy ones uh-huh um, cluggies is Navajo yes sir yes uh, back in I believe it was 1964 no correction 1864 when the US Army was rounding up Navajos to take them to Bosque Redondo mm -hmm. there's a lot of infants a lot of elders that couldn't make the trip Mm -hmm. So they left them behind. The rest that could make the trip, they first went to Fort Defiance and they went to Fort Sumner. They were stuck there for four years before the government decided to let them return to their homeland. And when they came back up here, they ran into the loved ones that they left behind. And they asked them, how did you survive? And I said, the cluggies took care of us. The hairy ones took care of us. Do you, yeah. have, do you have any more details? What would it would mean to take care of? What would that mean? Do you think? Uh, bringing them nourish, food. Yeah. Bringing them deer. Probably. <laughs> I don't know. Um, that's the oldest story I've heard. But uh, six years ago, my oldest brother and I were up further up the mountain, and. Seven years ago, if you asked me about Bigfoot, I would have been like, I got to see it to believe it. Mm -hmm. Six years ago, I heard the strangest sound I've ever heard in my life. I don't know what it was. We have bear, coyote. It didn't sound like any one of those. What would you call it? Some, give, give me one word for what it, what it sounded like. It sounded like a turkey at first. And it went into a howl high-pitched scream uh -huh. and it was loud and then the direction it came from was on top of the peak and the peak was about maybe 200 yards up mm -hmm. so this peak was how far away from you do you, you think mm, we're about the base of the peak so like I said just a straight walk just straight up it 
Is this peak um, a rock, or is it, is it is it a slope like this where a person could walk up it? Uh, it's a steep slope. Okay, and, and straight up. So is this peak um, forested, or is it just forested. straight rock? Forested. It's forested. Okay. Um, so is, are those the only uh, two things that are that hit your mind in terms of events that have occurred? No. What about your your rest of your family and other people you know? After I heard the screams. I worked down here at the She Springs Trading Post during that summer. This was in 2008. Two weeks after that, two mm -hmm. members up here started talking about noises, wood knocks, footprints. And as the months went by, there were people saying that they took calves. Calves are missing. Uh huh. And, you know, it's, this went on for the summer, and all of a sudden it just kind of stopped. And what year was that? This year? 20, 2013? 2008, when that happened. 2008. When, yeah, okay. when this was happening. Okay, so that was around the same time that you had your the same that you heard weeks. the heard the sound. Yeah. Within two weeks of that sound, there were uh, disappearances of livestock, particularly calves, and people were hearing wood knocks, screams, screams, and there were footprints being found. Mm -hmm. Of course, they didn't talk about it outside uh, the community. No, but eventually found out because it made it into the Navajo Times. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, towards the end of the summer, they were putting warnings, warning communities to be careful while they're herding sheep because ex-military was coming in to hunt these creatures. Did <coughs> they lose any sheep as well? You said calves. Calves? I mean, maybe. You know, there's probably... I, I don't know. You don't know. There's, there's, I'm so sure you remember know. calves, that it might have calves. been sheep as well. Yeah. Okay, so there's there were you say ex-military was this a government operation? No, it was us. You guys. 2008, yeah. Oh, okay. It so was with another outfit, but we were mm -hmm. pretty big. Okay. So these guys God. came in to save you guys, the rescue. You know. We weren't here to kill. We were just here to investigate. investigate. We spent about a week up on the uh, Lukachuka, uh -huh. and uh, we made it in the Navajo Times too, about the same time. So. Ah. Yeah, it, it, it was not a military operation. It was a research operation. Research. Yeah. Okay. No, we have ex-military. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Makes sense. Now, since then, um, now it's 2014. That was several years ago. Um, this is the first event that you know of that anyone's told you, let's say, in the last year? Yeah. About a sighting, a sound, or anything? Um, same brother, one that seen this creature running down this way. Mm-hmm. He didn't tell me when it happened, but he was up here previously, just him and his girlfriend collecting firewood in the same area further up this hill. Mm -hmm. They were loading up wood when he heard something hit a tree up there. Like something had like been thrown at the tree? Exactly, like in their direction. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he went down to go look. There was nothing down there. Okay. Could it have been something falling from the tree, or was it something that hit the tree at a height? Well... I mean, just imagine something falling from the tree. You know, so there's a lot of branches. The there's just like, you know, you'd hear yeah. that, but all you heard was a thud. It could have been like a rock thrown at a tree nearby them. Could, yeah. Something like that. Okay. Um, so what do you think this is? Uh, well, a lot of, like I said, people don't talk about it, but a lot of native tribes, they say it's a spiritual creature. Mm -hmm. has the ability to to travel both worlds, to walk in both worlds, the all world and the spirit world. That's why when people see it, they'll track it and they'll find it. They'll track it as far as they can and it will just vanish. And it's hard to determine where it went. Exactly. Okay. Um, so you grew up around here? Not exactly. I uh, grew up in Arizona. Uh -huh. I'm from the area. Mm -hmm. I recently started coming back and uh, six years ago was my first experience. Yeah. And people have started experiencing that. Four years after that, another brother of mine left his trailer up here for the winter, came back from work, saw footprints, huge footprints. Okay. Yeah, just walked to his trailer, looked at it, and just went back up into the trees. So he saw the footprints, and he didn't see the, what made them, but no. it, it disappeared. Okay. Well, do you have anything else you can remember or recall regarding this incident that we might find important? That's as far as, as, far as my family's been encountered. That's, that's it. That's it? Yeah. Okay. So your parents, it's interesting when you talk to First Nation people that it seems that younger people are more open-minded to, if they see or hear or something happens, to actually talk about it. 
whereas the older generation are more reticent. But that's generally part of the culture value yeah. at that point, because I know they're more reticent about talking about anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's just a way way of being. Um, so, oh, anyway, is there anything else that that you'd like to to say about this that you know impressed you? Um, it's it's make me a believer. You know. It well, is. what w uh, just to let you know for the record, what we are going to do is um, uh, we're going to be collect taking these samples, and we will be sending them uh, tomorrow via FedEx overnight, insured uh, uh, with our G a GPS and other information on each one of the envelopes to Dr. Jeffrey Meldrum at Idaho State University. University Jeffrey. As, as I've talked to him and has agreed in principle that any materials collected as far as possible will be returned to the site of collection and whoever is responsible for the siting or, or the ownership of that material. And this is on your land. It's in your nation, so I assume that would be you, your family. Mm -hmm. And so we'll be doing that. The idea is, what does the DNA tell us? We're going to look at the hairs. He's going to look at them forensically, examine them under you know high magnification, and see if they fit the pattern of what we would call um, uh, a Sasquatch or a Bigfoot, which has got a very distinct hair design and structure. And also then send them off. And he's going to probably do some of it. He's got local labs to examine them for DNA. The DNA is a scientific fingerprint, which will tell us definitively what this animal is related to and. If it is anthropoid, if it's an ape, how closely is it related to us or maybe other uh, great apes? And so we hope to be able to distinguish it clearly with DNA markers and say, well, yeah, this is a different animal. It's not a human. It's not a guy in a furry suit. It's not this. It's not that. It's really a new North American primate, which is at this point, uh, at least as far as we know, um, they're an undiscovered. In, in other words, there's no live specimen or dead specimen that we can call the, the you know the primary one to to do the study from. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. yeah, I really appreciate your time, and and we'll we will be getting back to you very soon. We'll be maintaining contact. I want to make sure I get your contact information, so you can tell your brother what happened here, and he knows what's going to be going on with this material. Okay.